Our next stop is another very famous place in Yunnan, Dali. In Dali, there was once an environmental storm that swept across the nation. So this is Lake Arhai? Yes. I heard there's this very serious environmental incident that took place here. Yes. Back then, the water was very clean. It was crystal clear. Yet with tourism development and more and more visitors coming, pollution was unavoidable. Hello. Hello, welcome to Dali. Thank you, Dali is so beautiful. I heard there was this serious incident regarding the environment before. Starting from 2017, with tourism growth and the development of agriculture and industry, there were two major outbreaks of blue-green algae. Blue-green algae all over the surface of the lake? Yes. I'm heading to the scene, a place called Erhai Lake under Chang Mountains. It's a very famous highland lake in Yunnan. The moon in Erhai over the snow in Changshan is a heavenly scene described in the Chinese novel Demon Gods and Semi Devils. The place it described is right here, Lake Erhai and Dali's Chang Mountains. Just now, an egret flew past. Lake Erhai is rich in biodiversity. There are dozens of fish species and loads of aquatic birds. Migratory birds, aquatic plants and all is a very precious natural ecosystem. Lake Arhai was once very peaceful and quiet, as if it were separate from the mortal world. But things didn't remain so idyllic. In the past dozen years, with the construction of the airport, the high-speed rail and highways, Yunnan has become highly accessible, so there was a sudden tourism boom. In 2016, there was a record-breaking number of over 40 million visitors. Numerous investors were attracted from other provinces who started building guest houses, hotels and restaurants, chasing great profits. At peak times, there were over 3,000 guest houses, yet some of them were operating without the licenses required. The garbage produced, human waste and rubbish had nowhere to go. So they just dump everything into Lake Arhai, causing severe damage to the natural shoreline and the water quality. Are you Sis Li Xishan? Yes. Hello. Hello. You have work to do? Yes, to fish out the dead waste. Can I join you? Sure. Lake Cleaner. Let's go. Lee has been a lake cleaner for more than 10 years, witnessing the changes here. Are you native here? Yes, I was born and bred here. I live here. Are you bi? Yes. We will come and swim in the lake. The water used to be very clear. So clear you could see the bottom? Yes. It was very clean? Very clean. There used to be a lot of Hai Hua fish and shellfish. There were shrimps too. But when Lake Arhai became polluted, the Hai Hua disappeared. No shellfish too. It was such a pity. These past few years, people didn't have knowledge about protecting the lake. They dumped all their rubbish into the water. So you saw rubbish everywhere? Yes, lots. And there were so many visitors. Used baby diapers, latest tampons and pads, all sorts of things everywhere. And you'd even find tickets, electricity bills. We'd pick those up, find the owners and knock on their doors one by one. Then we'd ask, is that your name on this? Some even would still deny it. Still? Yes. How could they? There's a name on it. There was. But I'd still say it's a conflict, making money and protecting the lake, right? If more visitors come, it's good for our development, right? 
Before 2018, air high situation was people in, lake out. People in, lake out? Yes, the area of the lake was shrinking. Houses were built. Houses were built on the lake's wetland, damaging the whole lake. The wetland was huge. Li Xueqing works in the Eco Administration Department of Lake Erhai. He says the economy was taking off. There were just too many visitors for them to handle. Around 2015, there were huge crowds. Let's take, for example, Dali's Shuanglang area, where the Golden Week holiday on National Day, in a single day, we received over 100,000 people. In such a small place, a small village, so many restaurants were opened all over the lake shore guest houses, hotels, and more. It was all very disorderly. The waste disposal problem was overwhelming the lake. Persistent man-made pollution contaminated Lake Erhai. Major outbreaks of toxic blue-green algae bloomed, but it wasn't pretty. The poisonous algae became a threat, killing the fish and other aquatic species, and the toxins did not go away. In 2018, the local government decided to launch a recovery project that upended the local economy, limiting tourism in the district. In 2018, all the houses built by the people on the lake shore were demolished and relocated to the foot of Chang Mountain. The plan was finally to get the people out and the lake in. Are you the owner of the guest house, please? Yes. How may I address you? Just call me Brother Hai. Hello, Brother Hai. Li Hai Zhong is a guest house owner. He says over the years, outsiders from Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou charmed by the serenity and the beauty of Lake Ar Hai. They quit their jobs, moved with their life savings, and set up their own guest house. Brother Hai, I heard all the guest houses were suddenly shut down and most of them demolished, right? Yes. At first, the government ordered all guest houses to install their own wastewater treatment facilities. Yet in the end, the government found it didn't work. They believed they had to get to the root of the problem and decided that a sewage disposal system has to be constructed. So all the guest houses were shut down, demolished and relocated. Within a few months, the project ordered 1,800 structures to be torn down and moved away from the lake shore. All the restaurants run by the guest houses had to be closed indefinitely. Other sources of pollution like livestock and agriculture were also affected. The Arhai River Basin used to be known for its garlic plantations, covering a vast area of 100,000 mu a source of riches for the local farmers. The residual chemicals from the pesticides leaked into the lake. So the government demanded the farmers stop using pesticides with high amounts of residue. Eventually, a full ban on growing garlic was issued. The farmers had to grow crops that caused less pollution, such as broad beans. So many people were affected. Yes, let's say 10 people per guest house, that's almost 30,000 people. So 30,000 people suddenly out of business, lost their jobs. No jobs. Brother Hai thinks the outside investors made contributions, driving employment for poverty alleviation and economic development. But there was no choice. The Arhai restoration project went on for three years, and many of his peers had to close down with losses. They had invested too much in it. It was a serious conflict of interest. It's not easy to run a guest house. It's a lot of investment. On total assets. It's not a small investment at all. It takes millions to set up a guest house. Right, all the investments went down the drain. What about the money? Right, so everyone found themselves without a choice. In order to protect the environment, that's a really decisive move. Whether you're in the right or whatever, protect the environment first. People were asking, why are you, the government, asking me to move? 
It wasn't easy for me to come up with the money for investment. I built a guest house, doing well. You were compensated for the relocation. They said, we aren't taking everything away. We're tearing down your building, but moving you elsewhere and build you a new one, paying you for whatever it costs. Then, with renovation, the money you spend, we'll make an assessment and pay you back. For the whole removal and restoration project, the amount of compensation exceeded an estimated 4 billion yuan. The local government suffered a loss from tourism income. For this battle to protect Erhai, everyone was paying a heavy price. So Master Lee, I wish to ask, when they first developed this area for tourism, why didn't they plan it well? Now with all these moves, it's so troublesome. Back in those days, development and protection were not in sync. That concept wasn't that strong. They didn't go side by side, right? Back then, people focused on economic development, making money, so they kept building more and more. They never thought about how they should protect as they sought development. They're just thinking about making money. Only when they realized the problem later did they start to adjust what they're doing bit by bit. During the process of growth and change, people's awareness is gradually raised. The law keeps getting fine-tuned and improved. At that particular time, you can't say it's wrong. Yet it's part of the process of growth and change. It's a precious lesson learned. Lake Ahai's development was a sign of all times. Back then, in the Dali Bai Autonomous Prefecture, there were over a dozen impoverished counties and hundreds of impoverished villages. As the government improved transport and infrastructure, the region became more accessible. Investors and visitors rushed in and the poor counties finally were lifted out of poverty as tourism grew. Yet at the same time, major damage was done to the environment. The water we see here is clear, but before, you'd probably smell the stink standing here. It really stank. Before 2018, not to mention standing by the lake, you couldn't even ride a bike through. This whole place was covered by houses, and the water quality was bad. It stank. There were algae blooms everywhere, threatening local people's incomes. The government decided to launch a major eco-restoration project and it became big national news. Within two years, the government built a massive wastewater interception system in the Arhai River Basin. There were 19 sewage treatment plants and an interception network of over 4,000 kilometers to ensure that not a single drop of wastewater could flow into Lake Arhai. We wanted to restore this part of the wetland, the mud flat that had been ruined. We built an eco-corridor surrounding the lake, stretching 129 kilometers to restore the lakeside area completely. When setting up the wastewater interception system, we had to go through a stage of pain, and that was to shut down all the guest houses. When we approached the guest houses, they understood. If things carried on the way they were, the water would gradually turn bad. And if the water went foul, they wouldn't have a business. It wouldn't do them any good. There'd be no visitors. No one would come. If visitors found the natural environment so poor, why would anyone stay in your guest house? After all the demolition along the lake shoreline, the government invested over 9 billion yuan on the Arhai Eco Corridor, stretching over 129 kilometers. They restored almost 800 hectares of wetland and built an underwater wastewater treatment plant that can process over 10 million tons of wastewater. Unlike conventional treatment plants which gives out foil smells, underground ones can release ground space for building more parks and tourism facilities. The Eco Corridor and Sandwich System have been completed. Guest houses and restaurants can restart running again. 
but some investors have left with losses. Back then, our garden would extend all the way to the lakeside. Now there's no way through to the shoreline. All the houses got demolished. It really took an extraordinary determination to make this happen. It's like removing a limb to save one's life. Frankly, it took great determination by the government and by us, the owners of the guest houses. So, to protect Erhai, the government has been through a lot and has spent so much money. That's why the water quality has significantly improved. The guest house operators did make a huge sacrifice to protect the whole basin. After three to four years of sacrifice, our high's lake water is much cleaner than before. Houses that once ate into the lakeside have been torn down, so we get to see the natural lake shoreline once again. And the restaurants and guest houses behind have gradually resumed their operations. Now we don't see tourists overflowing this place. Our high has recovered its peace from over a dozen years ago. After a period of temporary acute pain, everyone is starting all over again. Hello, be careful. Hello, Madam Yang. Madam Yang Xiaoxue is Deputy Chief Engineer of the Dali Environmental Monitoring Station. He's a local from Dali. He has been guarding our hive for over 30 years. Madam, you're awesome. You're setting sail today? Yes. These two are my colleagues. They're going with us today. Hello, thanks for the hard work. Here are the instruments we need for the check. You have to bring these items every time? They are for in-situ monitoring of the five parameters of water quality. This is a sampling point for drinking water. We come to take samples every month. Read that. For the past 30 years, Yang has been sailing every month to different spots to take water samples. This water appears quite clear to the naked eye. The water looks so clear. Read that. 7.27. 7.27. So how do you interpret these figures? There are five types of water quality. From type 1 to 3, we say the quality is fine. We can use it for drinking water. Dissolved oxygen is at 7.27. It's type 2. So it's fit for... Fit for use as a source of drinking water. A source of drinking water, yes. The lake is very different now. Back then, I've seen the pictures, it's very, very dirty. Yes, at the worst time, the whole lake was green. We were checking on an island in the north, and a colleague without sufficient knowledge insisted on going for a swim. When he got out, his skin was like a frog's. All covered in green? Green, and it felt prickly and itchy. Yang says the damage we've done to nature can't be reversed overnight. Now we have stopped air high's condition from getting worse. It stopped. But has yet to show a turn for the better. Now the water looks very clear to me, but that is still not the same as it was when you were a child, right? It's still quite a distance from what we saw when we were small. When I was a child, my parents would take us to the lake to learn to swim. I remember very clearly that when floating on the water surface, I could clearly see the bottom of the lake, see my hands and feet. When I was a child, there was a lot of fish in the lake. All local species. Now there's much fewer. So do you think Lake Aha is an epitome of restoration? It is. These past years, we've been developing so fast. Man has disturbed the environment so much, causing changes. It's like someone's ill and the illness really hits you. And it won't go away so easily. 
Now that we've made progress, we still have a long way to our target. It's going to take more persistence. It will take a while to recover. In the last series of No Poverty Land, we witnessed how tourism could defeat poverty. Asian Li Tang, look at all the tourists. As a local, I think Li Tang has changed so much over the past two years. Our people sniffing, the Tibetan people are leading a much better life. Do you find the living conditions better now in your hometown? Yes, much better than before. Back then, there's no electricity, no roads, signals. Now we have electricity, and we have signals. The kids can go to school when they are four years old. Conditions in my hometown are getting better and better. I'm very happy. This time, we see how the environment is damaged as poverty is reduced by economic progress. How should we balance economic development and environmental protection? Looking back, Lake Erhai is a classic example of tourism causing pollution. Since they have such a beautiful environment, they can make a living using nature. Yet during the process, they didn't think carefully about things. They've exhausted the nature, and they paid a heavy price. There's this classic saying, if there's not even a drop of clean water or a breath of fresh air left on Earth, what's the use of having all this money? Do you really want to grab all this money and migrate to Mars? Next week, we'll be in Sichuanbana in Yunnan to check out the tale of wild elephants. It's the first time we had a mission to look for a herd of elephants. We use our biggest drone. This is our ultimate weapon on hand. Ultimate weapon? It was nothing for them, just wander through town streets, stealing things to eat from the shops. They often eat our crops. The herd's journey north was just the start of it all. What exactly happened to the habitat? Why did they have to run away? Then off we'll go to Inner Mongolia, to a desert called the Sea of Death. History has it that there used to be plenty of water and grass in Kuputi. But excessive reclamation, grass burning and grazing led to greater desertification. Every day, from when you open your eyes till nightfall, the wind keeps blowing, we just kept going, planting trees. It will take the great effort of three generations to restore it. Why wait till you lose it before you learn to cherish it? Oh, 